Water power swallowing, water bottle don't bother with it. Politicians, politics flowing like it's bottomless. Started it and finished it, water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil, be careful homie, you spilling it. Welcome, beloved community. We are back again with yet another installment of the People's Water Board Coalition's Water Wednesdays webcast. As always, I am here with my beloved co-host, Valerie Jean. Hi, everyone. Can't forget our behind-the-scenes tech person, Miss Angelica, who is awesome. And today... We have the honor and the pleasure of having Miss Gina Peltier. She is a Nishinaabe with the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa. Hey, over here for the Chippewas, because that's that's um, my origin as well. <laughs> and project developer with the Honor the Earth organization. Thank you so much for being here today, Gina. We appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. And as my co-host always says, it's a short show, so you're going to jump right into it. <laughs> I'm so grateful that you're here. Thank you, Gina. You guys, thank you so much for having me on and for even being interested in this type of work and what's going on. Uh, it's really important, and I'm so excited to be able to be here to share all this information with y'all. We're excited to share it with uh, uh, with the community yeah. and with our viewers. Um, it's, you know, it's one of those things when we're when we're protecting water. There's always so many fronts, right? There that uh, folks are working on, and it's so important for us to be able to share those stories and those um, things, those struggles with with folks, so that they can get involved because it's going to take all of us, right? Um, yes. So. Can you tell us about the Talon Mind? Am I pronouncing yeah. it right, Talon? Uh, Talon? Talon? Talon. I think I've only Talon. ever read it. I don't think I've ever actually heard anybody say it. So <laughs> I wanted to make sure that I was saying it right. But can you tell us about the proposed Talon Mind and um, exactly what it is so that folks can get a full understanding of it? Yes, mm -hmm. I would love to. Um, so Talon Metals and Rio Tinto have just begun the environmental review process for a proposed sulfide nickel mine in Minnesota. This kind of mining is like highly polluting and threatens the water and the surrounding ecosystems, including some of the most abundant, beautiful Manuman wild rice lake beds in the world. And um, uh, people in that area, that's what we survive on. That's our livelihood. And so we just are trying to take a huge stand to protect all of it, you know. And so although they've only proposed one mining project so far in Tamarack, Minnesota, Talon and all these other companies are prospecting or they're looking for minerals across the whole region from northeastern eastern Minnesota to the upper peninsula of Michigan. And they hope to create this massive nickel mining district, putting the Mississippi River and the Lake Superior at risk. And so Anishinaabe bands in the region oppose this type of mining because it threatens the lands, waters, and lifeways. Life you know, in the 1855 and the 1854 treaties, reserve the rights of the Anishinaabe to hunt fish and gather in these treaty territories. And already, as has been the case with the PolyMet project in Minnesota, these treaties have helped to protect the waters that all of us depend on. You know, all the water is connected and we all need it to live. So it's really detrimental that we protect it. The federal government is now subsidizing Dizing talon metals and other mining projects, saying that they are necessary for this green energy transition. But there has been no consultation with Native nations, no environmental right. studies or reviews to determine if sulfide mining here would even be safe, which we all know it's not. Right. And like it definitely is, is a threat to the water and the people. Yes, you know, and, and it's not true that this nickel is needed for a transition to cleaner energy. You know, that's not how truly green or sustainable development happens. That's, that's right. green. That's green colonialism. Mm -hmm. You know, the companies behind Talon Mines say the minerals are needed for a renewable energy transition, but the minerals required to build those technologies are not renewable at all. And so and this not, is yeah, not at all sustainable. 
Yeah, this is not a just green transition. This no. is about sustaining the automobile industry and the profits of mm -hmm. major corporations and our dependence on individual vehicles in the same pattern as the fossil fuel companies. And you know what? This just needs to end. You know, we have over half of full-time working Americans unable to afford a one-bedroom apartment. That's and right. fossil fuel yeah. companies made trillions of dollars last year, not millions, not billions, trillions. Make it all make sense. Right. And now they want to use this whole new green transition, which isn't green, to continue this harmful practice of oppression and extraction and extortion. You know, mines like the proposed Talon mine in Tamarack are also often located on or near indigenous lands and reservations. So many of communities course, around here, and, oh, oh, most definitely mm -hmm. from the beginning, you know, starting yeah. 500 years ago, this has been That's happening. Right. Um, the genocide upon us, this is just another continuation. Yeah. Um, and so many communities um, around Turtle Island and all, all over the world, you know, they're calling this new era of extraction for the so-called green economy, a form of green colonialism. It's a perfect way to put it. Any way that you yeah. uh, slice the cheese, that's what's happening. You know, you can't um, you can't say it any other way. It's the first time I had heard it. I actually read it on your guys' website. I was like, yeah, yeah, that's a perfect way to um, to explain what's happening. Yeah, but and sadly, so in the past, they've just caused their destruction. On. You know, these... Oh, I'm so sorry, what? I, I no, didn't I hear you, Nicole. Sadly... Sadly, that's what this nation was built on, is is colonialism yeah, capitalism and be capitalizing. genocide of indigenous folk. Yeah. Yeah, most definitely. I mean, these fossil fuel companies knew the harm they were going to uh, cause. Scientists predicted with breathtaking accuracy the climate chaos that was going to happen using fossil fuels. And these companies used the money they stole from us to refute that. And they legitimately forced us to use fossil fuels. You know, we never needed fossil fuels to begin with. Henry Ford's first automobiles ran off a of hemp fuel. Whole body was made of hemp steel, which is a thousand times Imagine if we did how, how much healthier. Imagine our water now, like uh, how much more healthy the whole planet would be now if we had just went that route and stayed with it. Yeah, but it wasn't profitable, right? Yeah, At the right? moment, it wasn't profitable. Yeah, hemp you had the oil barons, the wood producers, and the cotton farmers use racism to make hemp illegal because you can Absolutely. grow it in your backyard. Right. And it cleans mm -hmm. the air. It's an excellent cleans cleans the soil. Cleans the soil. You know, since we have 50% less nutrients in our soil than we did 200 years ago because right. of the industrial farming. But um, you know, water is life and we just need yeah. to protect the water and all the other natural resources for future generations. You know, while also empowering mm -hmm. indigenous communities to help steward and truly transform ways of living to the right relationship. We to have the to relationship protect Mother Earth. Earth as a whole. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Gina, what I'd like to know is why is sulfide mining so toxic and what direct threats does it pose to our waterways? I am so happy you asked this question because this is the key thing that people need to know to um, <clears throat> talk about and to share with others. You know, this summer Talent Metals LLC shared the initial plans for their proposed sulfide nickel mine in Tamarack, Minnesota. And this project poses huge threats to the land and the water and the manumen wild rice. So sulfide ore is especially dangerous to mine because it creates sulfuric acid when combined with water and air and will poison oh, surrounding gosh. water bodies and wetlands. I mean, quite honestly, that should be enough said. Yeah. Um, but also, yeah. you know, to add to all that, the acid mine drainage also mobilizes other heavy metals into the environment, including mercury, which is a neurotoxin that accumulates in fish, which we eat, we depend yeah. on, we thrive yeah. on, you know, and this region where Talon is proposing to mine in Minnesota, Aiken County, you know, which we know from the line three construction where line three already damaged the land and water with the multiple frack outs and aquifer breaches. But Aiken County is very wet. Aiken County has more water than dry land. 
and has some of the richest Manuman wild rice lake beds in the world. And on top of that, peat bogs in the area, yeah, peat bogs, you know, we never think about peat bogs. <laughs> so the peat, even... bog, yeah, <laughs> peat bogs in the area would also be disturbed, releasing tons of stored carbon. And peat bogs are common in our region. And so some people take them for granted, but they're globally rare and really important to protecting the a livable climate and for cleaning water. It, keeps cleaning the water. And so they want to destroy that as well. Rio Tinting, uh, Rio Tinto was the mining company behind the Eagle Mine in Michigan's Upper Peninsula, which mm -hmm. opened in 2014 and is the only nickel mine in the US. The Keweenaw Bay Indian community and other community members resisted that project, but it was built anyway. And the mine desecrated a sacred site, Eagle Rock, and is currently polluting the surrounding land and water. These companies don't care about us. No, you don't. know, when they claimed it would close in 2021, but they continue to operate, drilling for more nickel. They're spreading like a disease. And now Talon Metals, with the support of Rio Tinto, <clears throat> Tinto is preparing to explore for even more nickel. In the, in the UP, right? Yes. yes. Yes, and when I heard about that, that sounded, because it sounds like they want to set up a whole, like, area, huge area where they do nothing but mine for precious metals what so-called precious metals right yeah like they're trying to buy up huge amounts of land to be able to do that yep they're requesting largest mineral withdrawal in the history of state of michigan in the upper <sighs> peninsula but you know these companies aren't just interested earth. in the one or two mines they're not you know they hope to open a mining district across a mining Lewis. district that's what she said that's when i talked a to her she said a district, mining district like it's like a restaurant yeah. group or something you know like you never hear that term like mining district. you've heard the restaurant district the, well it's because it's the first time it's ever district, happened right i mean like, this is like the yep how can you compare that to mining and extracting and destroying <laughs> our planet that's right <laughs> calling it a district like it's yeah. you know like it's like somewhere where you're gonna go shop exactly um, but you're not even gonna be able to live around those places right because it's going to be so toxic you're um, not for but the land be the water the no people other choice to live there because that's right. their people home. living in poverty and then housing is so unaffordable i guarantee you around that area they're going to put some type of quote-unquote affordable housing around there because mm -hmm. that's what they do with the brown fields. And with they'll the put black and brown people in it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, these companies are trying to use all the um, all the tricks that they can to get this done. Mm -hmm. um, so we're up against some big bullies here who really want to threaten our livelihoods for the sake of money, which we don't need. We don't need any of it. We're no. capable of living better lives without being forced to live under the system. So, you know, it's Absolutely. really important that we speak up now, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because once it's implemented, we already know. I mean, once it's already even just started to be built, it, it, we already know. Yep. So you yeah, have to stand against be... it before it happens. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as yeah, we get saw out of, in front three, of it. you know, and Dapple, yep. and now with MVP in mm -hmm. the Willow Project, you know, line three, like I said, destroyed so much like it goes through nearly half of north america's fresh water and they didn't even need to uh the oil they didn't even start flow of oil before they were successfully poisoning the water mm -hmm. you know yeah. so I remember the first leak and what's it's so absurd about all yeah. of this yeah. is that Aquifers. these huge conglomerates are acting like they don't need water to survive as well that's the thing well they don't it's live not there they're not but worried about even, their children. But if it damages through right? all of our thoroughfares, they're all connected. Sure. The whole entire system is going to be contaminated. Sure. They're not going to have fresh water to drink either, which, and they can't say, well, oh, I'll just buy bottled water because bottled water, a lot of them get their water from our fresh water ways too. So they're still not going to have water, but knowing them, they'll probably just drink martinis all day. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know the fact that uh, that they feel so disconnected from, you know, the people making these decisions feel so disconnected from it um, is really interesting to me because it's all very much connected. Indeed, 
indeed. Yeah, I'm super scared because, you know, around the same time Governor Waltz approved the permits for Line 3, water became a commodity on Wall Street. Mm. And so since they were successfully able to poison all the water with Line 3, um, it's just more incentive to cause even more chaos and construction. Because um, what are they going to do after they're done mining all this? You yeah. know, where they're going to make their money next. And yeah. we have been at war with our water, with the United States government for over 500 years. That's right. You know, before the settlers came over, you could drink from any lake, river, stream. And now, you know, you can't even drink out of your faucet. Yeah. Right now, literally. The, you know, our dear friend, um, Lila, she, Lila Cavill, she uh, passed a couple years ago, but she would always tell us when she, opened up a room. She was very, she's a water warrior from, uh, to the bone. And she would always tell us that the bit, biggest evil that, um, had ever been done to the earth and the people was the commodification of water. And mm -hmm. I remember when, um, when it came through that, that wall street had completely, totally commodified the water. Um, it, it already, they had started years before, but where it was already, where it was just like, and her being so broken about it, saying this is the worst thing that could happen to all of the whole planet, all of us, and in the water. Um, and I tend to agree with her. Um, what can people do to learn more and to get involved? You know, like we want people to be able to plug in. It is scary, but we also want to be able to grow a movement to stop this. What can people do to start to fight back and get plugged in and learn all that they need to know? Yeah, so there are a few groups that have started already gathering all the information. Um, so the Malax Band of Ojibwe has indicated through their initiative, Water Over Nickel, that this proposed talon mine threatens their land and their people. And so you can follow them at wateroverNickel.com. And then a local citizens group, Tamarack Water Alliance, has formed to educate and organize others in the region around protections for water and community health. And so you can find out more information um, at tamarackwateralliance.org. And then of course, you know, Honor the Earth opposes the Talon Mine and Rio Tinto's other proposed mines all over the world. You know, they have a documented track record of environmental and human rights abuses yeah. and a disregard for indigenous people. You know, Completely. so yeah. just speak up. Tell everyone you know about it and try and get all the information you can. You know, sometimes I lose my voice towards the end of the night because, you know, I spend all day talking about this. Mm -hmm. You know, even with fossil fuels, I've talked to the people who changed my oil about it, you know, and oh, right. I know they know me, you know, but, right. you know, you go into all of it and they just like, mm -hmm. even with them that you can, when you see the light bulb click after sharing all these facts with yeah. them, that is so much motivation to keep going because like i know i sound like a broken record every day of my life yeah. and the people around me you know get a little tired of it but um when seeing new people join the movement and seeing it excel and stuff like that that really keeps us going um and there's so many amazing people out there that don't know how whatever you can do even if it's just sharing some information on social media sharing this web travel. you could you could share this water wednesday everywhere this water <laughs> wednesday. and we're going to have like the things we're going to put those things in the description box too so that folks can plug into them and uh we'll we'll share those links with folks too the ones that you just mentioned to make sure that um everybody can just kind of click on them while they're right here at the on the show or watching the show yeah yeah, so I mean, you can get involved in many ways. Um, whatever you're capable of um, is great. You know, just even showing up and taking space when events happen is more than enough. Um, so, well, actually, yeah. I think it's probably the most important thing to show up in space. That's where Definitely. that's where you find your community, right? A yeah. community you didn't even know you had before. That's really what this work does. Um, is it is it helps us build community and family. Um, across the land, right? It does connect us in a really special way. So showing up, just showing up to an event or organizing your own event, or you could like organize a community discussion about it with your neighbors, right? There's Absolutely. a lot of ways that people can get involved and being in community is the best one. Yeah. Yeah. Also, you know, and I'm really glad you brought that up. And I'm just going to be real here, you know, before I got heavily involved 
in this quite a few years ago, you know, I didn't like anyone. I was really antisocial. I didn't have any <laughs> friends. I was just really happy staying at home. But, you know, yeah. seeing what was going on in the world, I had to get involved and showing up and seeing how many beautiful people out there that are think just like you um, is, is just so healing to it the is. society that we've been having to been raising that it just really keeps you going and it's really inspiring. It is. Yeah. It's, it, it absolutely you, is. It lets you know that you're not alone in your thinking and your ideologies too. And that's always a very confirming, a very healing feeling to know that you're not the only one that thinks this way. And wants to well, fight back, you know, yeah, and, and create something better for us all. Yeah, definitely. Um, before we wrap up, Gina, do you have any final thoughts, any like final statement that you want to make to our viewing community that may be that little, you know, nudge they need to be spurred to some type of action? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I was fortunate this enough this week to be able to attend the 20th anniversary of the Crandon Mine Purchase in Mole Lake this weekend. Mm -hmm. And it sounds a little like, oh, a, a mine purchase? You know, why would you celebrate that? But um, the, um, this community was able to come together and stop this threat to build an immense copper and zinc mine near the mole lake in wisconsin Stop you know and so just hearing the stories from these people who came together and fought all day every day and how were they were successful in stopping this mine it really lit that fire you know after yeah. being on the front lines of battling line three and helping out with line five and mvp and what's going on in society in the world today it's really heavy um but it's just yeah. being in that space of celebration with the powerful speakers um really just healed me um and inspired me you know and, and the celebration included a powwow and a traditional feast awesome. of foods of venison and beef ticks tips and manuman wild rice um, wonderful so it was yeah. so beautiful it's just oh i really hope that we can have celebrations like these more in the future um yeah. but alliances locally and across our region will be critical to stopping rio tinto and talon metals from destroying yeah. the headwaters of the mississippi and lake superior um, so, you know, the Tamarack Water Alliance is a good example of this in Minnesota, but I do want to give a shout out to the other groups in Michigan, Wisconsin, who are organizing in the resistance of these mines, you know, Mining Action Group, the Upper Peninsula Environmental Coalition, um, the Superior Watershed yeah. Partnership, um, Save the Menominee River Coalition, and the Yellow Dog Watershed Preserve. Freshwater mm -hmm. Future, Lake Michigami Landowners, and the River Alliance of Wisconsin. You know, together, you guys, we can stop this. We can That's do right. it. It's been done mm -hmm. before. Yes. You know, so, you know, thank you guys so much for all you do and for having me on today to share this critical information with y'all. Well, thank you so much, Gina. Um, I, I thank you for all that you do. Uh, I know that you had... Uh, you've had a busy month or so. You were in New York mm -hmm. for the End Fossil Fuels um thing and you came to uh, you came to the Waters Life Festival and and spoke and um it seems like I, you you seem so upbeat up because I know you have not rested <laughs> you have been going so thank you for all that you do um it it means uh it means a lot to seven generations ahead to me my children yes. it's very inspiring thank you thank you Definitely. I completely concur with everything yes, it's gonna... that Valerie said. And it's so warming and healing, as you said, to find that we have another sister in the movement that's fighting alongside us. That's so right. Do thank you for that. It's, you know, it's such an important um, show. Folks, please do share it out. Go learn as much as you can. Plug in. 
Gina named a whole bunch of ways for you to plug in, a whole bunch of different organizations. Um, go check them out. Learn all that you can. Thank you for always tuning in and supporting us here on Water Wednesday, uh, the People's Water yeah. Board Coalition. Um, and Nicole and I really, really appreciate all of our viewers for um, for the support. And, you know, it's really difficult times. Try to take care of each other. Try to look out for each other and try to stay afloat. Bye. Bye, everyone. Be good, Bob, man. Started it and finished it. Water needed to swim in it. More valuable than oil. Be careful, homie. You're spilling it. <laughs>